Hey, take your Bible out if you would, whether in book form or digital form, and hold it high in the air. And say this after me. This is my Bible. God's holy word. I am what it says I am. I will do what it says for me to do. I place myself under the authority of God's word. It says I am blessed. Therefore, I am blessed. It says, I am an overcomer. Therefore, I overcome every obstacle, every challenge, and every hindrance through the name above every name, Jesus Christ. I open my heart and I open my mind to receive God's word. I receive this word and I confess this word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Continuing our series on heroes of the church, we've looked at two heroes thus far, Nehemiah, the builder, Barnabas, the encourager. And today I want to move to the book of Philippians and see a lesser known individual who has a tremendous impact in their local church, their local community. Now, the book of Philippians is a favorite to many. And there are several aspects to this letter I think that you will find important. One is the Apostle Paul is the author. It is also known as one of the prison epistles. Now, Paul had a a kinship with the Philippian church, and they blessed him on several occasions financially. The Anchor Yale Bible Dictionary writes this. Paul's letter to the Philippians is essentially a letter of friendship addressed to a church which had supported him financially with which he had a deep personal relationship with. And it's in this letter that we are introduced to an individual who represented their church well and had a great love for his local community. And the hero that we're going to look at this morning is a man by the name of Epaphroditus. So turn to the Philippians chapter 2, look in your notes, verse 25 through 30, as we're introduced to this man, Epaphroditus. Meanwhile, I thought I should send Epaphroditus back to you. He is a true brother, a co-worker, and a fellow soldier. He was your messenger to help me in my need. I am sending him because he has been longing to see you, and he was very distressed that you heard he was ill. He certainly was ill. In fact, he almost died. But God had mercy on him and also on me so that I would not have one sorrow after another. So I am all the more anxious to send him back to you, for I know you will be glad to see him. And then I will not be so worried about you. Welcome him in the Lord's love and welcome him with great joy. Give him the honor that people like him deserve. Notice verse 30, for he risked his life for the work of Christ, and he was at the point of death while doing for me what you could not do from far away. Epaphroditus, a lesser known figure in the New Testament, was a member of the church in Philippi. His name is mentioned only two times in the word of God, but his impact is significant. Let me give you just a little bit of background information. He was a companion of Paul during his imprisonment, and he served as a messenger between the church in Philippi and the apostle Paul. He brought gifts from the Philippians to Paul, providing much needed support during his time in prison. Epaphroditus stands as an example of selfless service. Despite his personal challenges, his primary concern was for the welfare of others and for fulfilling his duties. 
This calls you and I to look beyond our own struggles, our own shortcomings, and our own, own circumstances, and to serve others faithfully. If Nehemiah, the builder, speaks to us, if Barnabas, the encourager, speaks to us, then I know Epaphroditus, the soldier, will too. You know, the word of God infers that we are soldiers of the cross of Calvary. That you and I have been enlisted in the greatest army of all, the army of the Lord. You and I have been called to serve and to service. And I believe this man's life is going to speak to us today. Notice in the notes that you received when you came in, the first thing we want to talk about is what we know about Epaphroditus. Look at verse 25. Meanwhile, Paul said, I thought to send him back to you. He is a true brother. He is a co-worker and a fellow soldier. He was your messenger to help me in my need. Write this under A. He represented the church of Philippi. See, Epaphroditus seems to have functioned as a leader in the church in Philippi. He represented the heart of the church, the DNA of their ministry. The church in Philippi was a church of generosity. It was a missional church. And this man's life speaks of generosity. It speaks of living on point, living with mission. Epaphroditus represented well. What we also know about him is he is delivering an offering to the apostle. He brought Paul a gift from the Philippian church during his first imprisonment in Rome. Now, Paul describes this gift as a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Paul went on to claim that it was more than sufficient for his needs. Matter of fact, if you turn to chapter 4 of Philippians and you look at verse 4, 18, Paul writes this, At the moment I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent with me or to me through Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. Now, the very next verse is where Paul gives this great word, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You have heard that verse quoted time and time again. But notice the context. The context of that verse is in response to their faithfulness and generosity to the kingdom and to Paul personally. So read it with that in mind. Verse 19, the same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches. See, when we live open-handed, when we live with the heart of generosity, when we live with the heart of serving others, God will take care of you. God will supply all of your needs according to his glorious riches. Can you say amen? It's about learning to live on point, learning to live missional. Epaphroditus speaks to us as a person who was willing to serve, serve the kingdom and to serve others. Write this under C. He was fulfilling a mission and a ministry of the church. Notice how Paul describes him in verse 25. He was your messenger. You can actually look at that word in the original. It's apostolos. It's the one sent, sent by another, the messenger. Yeah. Epaphroditus was on assignment, and he faithfully carried out his duties. He was entrusted with an important task of delivering a gift from the Philippian church to the apostle Paul. So this shows you and I that he was deeply respected and trusted by his community. I think it's important that you and I live in such a way where your life will build trust and respect from others. 
Make it your desire, make it your, your aim to live in such a way where your life will, will build trust and respect from others. Yes. Your name matters. Right. Listen to what Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1 says. A good reputation is more valuable than costly perfume. Proverbs 22 verse 1. Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver or gold. See, Epaphroditus, his name meant something because his actions spoke loud. He was a man who could be trusted to deliver the offering and the message from the Philippian church to their apostle who was sitting in prison. He served the church, the kingdom, and others faithfully. Listen to this old wise Jewish saying, have regard for your name since it will outlive you longer than a thousand hordes of gold. Have regard for your name because after you and I are long gone, your name will still speak. Here we are centuries later, Epaphroditus, his name speaks to us. It speaks to us as a fellow soldier. It speaks to us as one who is serving others well and who is faithful to the call. His life is a lesson of overcoming challenges. It's what we know from our passage in verse 27 Paul says he was ill. In fact, he almost died. He faced health challenges, but it didn't stop him from being faithful. He faced challenges in his own personal life, but he still served the church, the community, the kingdom of God. He served others. His primary concern primary concern was the worry his illness had caused upon his church. His life is a lesson of overcoming challenges. Despite his illness, Epaphroditus remained steadfast in his service. He was focused on the well-being of others, on the mission he was given. His recovery from illness is attributed to God's mercy, showing his faith and reliance on God. Now, notice Paul's description of him in verse 25. It says, he is a true brother, he is a co-worker, and a fellow soldier. Now, I think these descriptions hold profound significance for, for our Christian journey today. A true brother. Did you know that we are called brothers and sisters in Christ? That we're bound by love one to the other and by our mutual faith? The Apostle Paul writes to the church of Rome in chapter 12, verse 10, love each other with genuine affection. Take delight in honoring one another. One translation says preferring one another. And that's what the community of faith does. We are brothers and sisters. We're here to serve one another, to prefer one another, to encourage one another. As a true brother, Epaphroditus was devoted to Paul and to the believers in Philippi. His life challenges us to cultivate a spirit of brotherly love toward our community of faith. My hope and my prayer is this. As God continues to to manifest his glory at Glad Tidings, as God continues to manifest his glory in your life, that there will be a spirit of brotherly love among us where we'll encourage one another, where we'll spur each other on to growth, and we'll serve one another as we serve Christ. Not only did he say, my brother, but he says, a co-worker. Now, Epaphroditus was not just a bystander in the work of the gospel. He was a co-worker, actively involved in ministry. I want you to see yourself not as a bystander, but as actively involved in the service of the king. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9, Paul is writing, he says, For we are both God's workers. You are God's field and you are God's building. 
He's referring to him or Apollos as there was contention there in the church of Corinth. Some saying we are followers of Paul and we are disciples of Apollos. And Paul says, listen, we're both God's workers. And it's important that you and I see each other as God's workers. Called to be co-laborers in God's kingdom. Using our gifts and our talents to serve him and to serve others. I love this verse from the apostle Peter. Later in his life, he writes this in his first epistle. Chapter 4, verse 10. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. God has gifted you. Use your gifts well to serve each other. See, the life of Epaphroditus speaks to us. It speaks to us because he is, he's a fellow brother. He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a follower of Christ, but he's also a co-worker. He says, listen, I'm not going to be disengaged. I'm going to be a part of what God is doing. I'm going to be a part of the work of God. And he was, he was valuable to the apostle Paul. The apostle Paul says he's a co-laborer together with me, working together. Did you know by your faithfulness and by your serving, that you and I are co-laborers together. Everything that I do to accomplish what God has called me to do here is you and I doing it together. And I take great pleasure in knowing that what God's called you to do, that I'm also your co-laborer and the blessings and the, and the great achievements that you will, you will achieve in the kingdom of God. We're co-laborers together and I'm helping you and encouraging you in those things. And that's the beauty of the body of Christ. Not only was he a co-laborer, but write this, he calls him a fellow soldier. A fellow soldier. This speaks of their shared struggles and battles in the faith. Find a community that you're willing to struggle with. Find a community that you're willing to go in the battle with. Find a community that you're willing to go to fight for we are in a spiritual battle listen we're not fighting one another we're not fighting flesh and blood we're fly, fighting principalities and what we've got to do is see that we are soldiers together find a band of people find a band of believers find a community of faith that you can say i will fight with you that's what I love about the kingdom of God. That's what I love about glad tidings is we are soldiers of the cross. Workers in the kingdom of God. In Ephesians 6, 11 through 13, this passage encourages us to put on the full armor of God so that we can stand against the devil's schemes or strategies. Like Epaphroditus, we too are engaged in a spiritual battle. We need to stand firm with our fellow soldiers in Christ. Which brings us to this thought. We have a call to duty. We have a call to duty. We are fellow soldiers in Christ. Write the word recruited. You have been recruited. Recruited by God called by God, chosen by God. Hear me today, saying you are redeemed. You are saved. You are born again. You've been delivered from death to life, and you are enlisted in the army of God, soldiers of the cross, not for harm, but for good, to serve each other, to serve others, and to advance the cause of the kingdom of light. Paul writes in Colossians 1 verse 13, he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. We've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's holy son, Jesus Christ. Peter would write this, you are not like that. You are a chosen people. 
a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The old English says, into his marvelous light. I'm thankful that I have been chosen by God. I've been called by God. I've been called to a duty to serve him, to serve his kingdom, and to serve others. Be a light shining in the darkness. We have a responsibility to show love. We have a responsibility to show cooperation and unity to the community of faith to a team of workers, co-workers, co-laborers together, and to the kingdom of God. So think about these descriptions that Paul uses for Epaphroditus for a moment. And as you think about these descriptions, ask yourself, am I acting as a true brother or sister to my fellow believers? Ask yourself this question, Am I actively serving as a co-worker in Christ's mission? Another question. Am I prepared for spiritual battles that we face as soldiers of the faith? Let you and I strive to embody these roles in our own Christian walk. Fostering brotherly love, actively serving God's kingdom, and standing firm in our faith. Matter of fact, start this week. Start this week. Find find someone to show brotherly love to. Someone in your community. Identify an area where you can serve more effectively in God's kingdom. Start this week by taking time each day, putting on the full armor of God through prayer and through Bible study. Let's walk in the footsteps of Epaphroditus, becoming true brothers, co-workers, and fellow soldiers of Christ. Which brings us to our last thought. Epaphroditus went above and beyond. Notice Paul's description of him in verse 30. For he risked his life for the work of Christ. He was at the point of death while doing for me what you could not do from far away. Write that word rest. He risked his life. At the point of death, Paul says. Now, the theme in this verse is the radical commitment and self-sacrifice that Epaphroditus demonstrated for the sake of Christ's work. He went above and beyond. His willingness to risk his life underscores the depth of his dedication to the mission of the gospel. Now, I need you to hear this. I am not advocating you risk your life or you place yourself in some kind of danger. But a great question to ask ourselves is, am I willing to serve God? Am I willing to serve his church and others beyond my own comfort and convenience? You know, I am thankful that we live in a land that is still free. I'm thankful that we live in this great nation, that that we can come together and worship without fear. So the likelihood of you and I ever having to risk our life in worshiping to God is really very small. But are you willing to risk comfort and convenience? Are you willing to give up your rights so that someone else can see the goodness of God? Are you willing to become uncomfortable in uh, the role that God is asking you to do in order to be faithful to what he's calling you to do? Epaphroditus, his actions serve as a powerful example of Christian service and commitment. He was willing to put his life on the line, not for personal gain or recognition, but for the sake of Christ's work. It reminds us that we are living for a higher purpose. And that is so important for you and I to keep in mind. We are living our life for a higher purpose. 
The higher purpose is the work of Christ. The higher purpose is the work and mission of uh, the church. And as believers, we are challenged to emulate the same level of commitment and sacrifice shown by Epaphroditus. And while few of us will be called to risk our lives, in the same way we're called to prioritize the work of Christ above our own comfort and convenience. So what may this look like? This this may look like sacrificing our time, our resources, our personal preferences to serve others or to share the gospel of Christ. For example, we might choose to dedicate a portion of our income above our tithe to support missions. Or it may look like this. It could involve volunteering our time to serve in church ministries, community outreach, or mentoring young believers. It might even mean standing up for our faith in situations where it might cost us something, such as friendships, popularity, or possibly professional advancement. Epaphroditus was willing to risk his life to be faithful to the mission the church had given him. My challenge to us today is to be willing to risk your comfort and convenience to serve one another, to serve God's church, and to serve his kingdom. To live your life on point to live your life on mission. It may mean speaking the truth when others don't want to hear the truth. It may mean giving God your yes and standing by your convictions when everyone else is creating their own. It may mean sacrificing some friend relationships. It may mean sacrificing some quote, popularity in order to be faithful to what God's called you to live for. Hear me, you're living for a higher purpose. You're living for the purpose of the kingdom of God and for the purpose of his church. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, because this hero, the church, speaks to us. This hero of the church, Epaphroditus, relatively an unknown individual, only two verses, but yet he lived his life in an impactful way. Lord, most of us will never be famous. Lord, most of us will never have our name in bright lights or be known nationally or on the world stage. But will we, will we be known by being faithful to what is in front of us? Will we be known by being faithful to God's church, to God's kingdom, and to God's work? Lord, as we pray now, I believe the Holy Spirit, the creator of all things, Jesus is speaking to each of us. He's showing us areas in our mind where we can be real soldiers of the cross. He's showing us areas in our mind where we can live out our faith in the marketplace. Maybe we're thinking of times when we gave in to pressure and we didn't, we didn't stand like we should have. There's another opportunity coming. God, by his Holy Spirit, is speaking to you at this moment and dropping names of people 
people you have influence with, people you're in relationship with, that he's calling you to serve, he's calling you to encourage, he's calling you to witness to. Epaphroditus speaks to us because he was faithful. Faithful to what was placed in front of him. Willing to risk everything to fulfill the mission. God's calling you and I to faithfulness. God's calling you and I to live and to love like this man. A true brother, a co-worker, a fellow soldier. Lord, how can we put you first? How can we put your work first today? Lord, I pray that you would give us the courage and determination to follow the example of Epaphroditus. Lord, I pray that you would help us to prioritize your work above our own comfort and convenience. And Holy Spirit, guide us in finding practical ways to live out this radical faith in our day-to-day lives. We say yes to you. We say yes. As our head is bowed and our eyes are closed, will you give God your yes? Will you give God your yes and say, I will live out this radical faith. I will serve God. I will serve his kingdom as a fellow soldier of the cross. If that's you, just lift your hand right now all across this auditorium. Give God your yes. Give God your yes. Can we stand together? Can we enter to a time of worship? I'm going to ask you to respond to the preaching of the word by stepping out from where you are and come down front. I think it's so important that you and I respond to God's word. As you respond to the preaching of the word, you'll find the Holy Spirit will just begin to speak to you. The Holy Spirit will begin to just manifest himself in such a powerful way. God, we come. We surrender our hearts. We surrender our lives to you, Lord. Here I am, God. I'm this before Here we are, Lord. Jesus.
It's a cry of giving our all to the Lord. Say it I'm lost without you. Without you. As you as you shut yourself in with the Lord, I feel there are those here today. You feel like that you have drifted drifted away and that's the that's the word I feel the Holy Spirit just dropped in my heart that you've drifted off center you know when you're living life off center is easy to live in condemnation and guilt but hear the voice of God calling you hear the voice of God say come home Hear the voice of God say, come to me. Jesus declared, come unto me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, when you live off center, you live in a state of restlessness. But when you live with Christ at the center of it all, there's a peace. It doesn't mean everything that happens or comes your way is good and wonderful, but it means that you face those challenges with a joy unspeakable and full of glory, with a peace that surpasses understanding. And you know that no matter what, God is looking at you with favor and divine pleasure. So I want to invite you, if you feel like that you've drifted, you feel like you're living off center, simply confess it to the Lord. Just say this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I confess my need. I confess my need. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I come back home. I want to live my life with you at the center. In Jesus' name, amen.